It's that time of the year again where consumers across the world have to navigate all these juicy booby traps set by brands to get them to spend more and buy, buy, buy because they come at attractive discounts that are, you know, sometimes almost too good to be true. I myself fall victim to some of these things and hopefully this particular video can help you curb that acquisition syndrome that you may have and save yourself some money this holiday season. If you're a photographer or a filmmaker like me, before you make any purchase, put it through this money saving checklist to see if it passes before you click buy. And I have to say that, yes, you know, it mainly applies to people like us, filmmakers, photographers. However, this checklist can be used on any other thing that you may be tempted to purchase or get. Now, it's not just Black Friday. That's any other season where, you know, there are discounts being thrown at you left, right, center. So let's get to the first one. First point on the checklist. Is it a need or a want? That's the question. Now, most people can't really tell the difference if, you know, especially that items on sale are so affordable. A want is not the same as a need. A want is something that you can actually do without at any particular moment, but some way, somehow, it fulfills a desire or passion, a thrill, you know, something that's most likely to die after a day of owning it, and it just becomes one other thing that you own. That's a want. A need, however, is much more weighty on the scale of should I buy it or not. If you need to buy it, then it means that if that thing isn't available, it makes achieving some goal very difficult or nearly impossible. Uh, so you own a microphone for vlogging, for example. But a newer version is out there, the old one gives good quality sound, but a new one is slightly better, then that becomes a want, not a need. A need is when you actually don't own a microphone, but you need one for quality sound for your videos, for example. If you can do without it, you do not need it. Point number two, can you afford it? Very essential. Affordability varies depending on where you find yourself in the world. You know, I have come to realize that, you know, in some countries, the credit system allows you to make certain purchases even when you don't have ready funds available for it. In Ghana and most African countries, uh, most things go against you in your purchase, which makes it automatically easy to be very frugal in a way. Now, we don't have a credit system and purchases here seldom come with payment plans. So what are you going to do? Before you make any purchase, you have to have the full funds already cast for it. Even if you're buying online, it's direct debit. Going by this quote, if you can't buy two of it, then you can't afford it. It's really important in this season. If you have saved purposely for this particular item and you're not digging into your emergency fund to buy it or make the purchase, then that's absolutely fine. But first, make sure that it goes through the first step of asking yourself whether it's a want or a need. Now, the third thing is accessibility or availability. This applies mostly to gear or, you know, things that we use for projects. Um, whatever that you want to purchase, depending on how often you will be using it, is it something that you can have access to without having to buy your own at a particular time? Like, for example, do you have to go and purchase your own C300 Mark III for a client project now? Or you can rent it, make the money, and then save for yours later. Is it also readily available for rent? And does it make sense to own yours? If it doesn't, then hey, don't go and buy it. Which brings me to my next point, the usability of the particular item. Usability is very important. You know, all these points tie into one another. For example, you're a YouTuber and that's all you do predominantly. You don't do any other thing. You're not a filmmaker. You're not a content creator with clients that have very specific needs, which in my previous point, maybe you can rent for, for use. Let's just say you don't even have plans of going pro in filmmaking. So for your daily or weekly vlog, do you actually need something like the Aperture, for example, 300D, when the Godos XL 60W would do the same job? Why go and buy something like, you know, Blackmagic Cinema Pocket 6K, when you seldom shoot 6K footage for yourself personally, all because maybe you saw a pro, you know, review it and the pro's work was really nice. If your need isn't up to what 
is being sold, then get something within your user range. It's very essential. We are currently still, you know, consuming content in 1080 mostly. So the most you have to get is a decent 4K camera like the M50 or something. Next point on the checklist is longevity. All the things that exist will become obsolete or go out of fashion at some point. We've seen it. We're still seeing it. The evolution of gadgets and where it's going. Every single week, there's something new that is being thrown at us. And if you must make a purchase, try and get something that, you know, will stand the quality of time or some time. Get something that you can use between three and five years. A long-term use item, which, you know, is future-proof. That is something that you need to satisfy some work or some need for a very long time. Like I said in the previous point, if you're not using the set thing every day to make your work easier and offer value that generates returns, then you most likely don't need it. Why make that purchase? So get something that will stand the test of time and make you more than its value in a space of say three to five years. That is what you need. So the last point on the checklist is the resale value of the item. This mostly applies to gadgets or tech products. You know, it's what you're buying resellable in the future when you want to, you know, sell it off and replace it with another. Um, some things have very stable resale value, like, you know, camera lenses. A lot of new cameras are coming and going, but a good glass is always gold. So do your research on that particular item, the brand, the need for it, the general need. And of course, there's the accessibility, usability, longevity, resale value, and see if it works for you before you fall victim to buying something or making some purchases that will leave you broke and unsatisfied. So that's it from me for today. Enjoy the rest of your season. Make sure you're making the right decision when you're clicking buy and save yourself some money. If you like this video, click a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't done that. My name is Kwame. I'm a documentary filmmaker and photographer as well as a voiceover artist here in Accra, Ghana. And uh, happy shopping or not.